Hello and welcome to the Stronghold Digital Mining Daily Update. Today is Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. So, do you happen to live in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? I know that there are quite a number uh, of individuals who are uh, proponents of what Stronghold Digital Mining is attempting to accomplish, uh, but not all of uh, us live here in Pennsylvania. So I am specifically curious as to whether or not you happen to live here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and have at least some modicum of uh, genuine interest in seeing the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania close uh, the chapter on coal mining, right? That has been a long, long part of this, uh, this state's history. To see that chapter be closed appropriately, by uh, getting rid of all of the mine waste that was left behind as a result of many, many, many decades of coal mining right here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Because, you know, leaving mine waste to pollute in perpetuity is a disgrace. And it is something that, from my perspective, uh, is the equivalent of like a dirty bomb that continually and perpetually detonates, spewing its quasi-radioactively toxic uh, elements into the environment, right? Into the water when it rains, into the air, right? In a completely uncontrolled fashion, when many of these mountains of mine waste sometimes combust. Um, I see it as a really big problem. And clearly, once upon a time, a bipartisan group of individuals in Harrisburg thought the same thing. And they're like, hey, we got to get rid of this trash. We don't want to live in a dumpster that's essentially filled with mine waste. And so in a bipartisan manner, right, uh, a structure was put into place to help with the creation of purpose-built mine waste to energy facilities. And over the years, these facilities, the cat agrees, over the years, these facilities, you gotta love cats, these facilities have done their job, right? However, in the early 2010s, a lot of these facilities started to lose access to a viable marketplace for the power that they were essentially creating. A lot of, you know, uh, purchase agreements kind of went away and a lot of these purpose-built facilities found themselves no longer being able to sell to a steady customer, right? So you take all this mine waste, you turn it into electricity, and all of a sudden you're having to take it into the market. And, you know, if grid prices are particularly low, you can't really continue to do what you're doing because there's just no money to do it. It's not as if though these uh, facilities are funded with a blank check by government. Um, I mean, I think the Commonwealth has done what it can, right, to help uh, promote and support, right, these environmental uh, reclamation activities. But there's only so much that the Commonwealth can do, given the fact that there are a myriad of other priorities uh, with which government is seemingly constantly having to grapple, right? Uh, to grapple with. Hey, we need money for this. We need money for that, right? There's, there's, there's a need, an endless need for money everywhere. So when you have businesses, private enterprises, right, that come up with a potential solution, right, whereby, hey, you know, maybe instead of having to continually ask the government for more money or to simply shut these purpose-built facilities down, uh, and that's it, right? Like we just have to live in this dumpster of mine waste that remains forever. You know, when you have a, a private business innovate and say, hey, you know, what if we can actually use this electricity to mine something new and different and which seems to be catching on on a global basis, say something called Bitcoin. And by doing that, we enable these facilities, right, to, to continue operating, or at least, you know, the effort is being made to help these facilities continue operating. 
During the mine waste to electricity creation process, the overwhelming majority of, you know, to, to, to use a phrase that, uh, you know, sometimes you hear around here, you know, all that toxic shit gets pulled out of it. That's, that's a scientific term, by the way. Uh, you know, most of all that crap gets pulled out. Um, is it a perfect process? No. Is there some level of emission? Yes. Is it a dramatically uh, healthier level of emission than if a mine waste mountain spontaneously catches fire and just burns uncontrolled? Um, arguably, I'd rather see all that mine waste go through a purpose-built facility that's going to scrub a lot of that pollution out of there, right? But yet, there seems to be now a <clears throat> almost like a discriminatory attitude that's taken towards mine waste to energy facilities that are attempting to subsidize their operations through the mining of Bitcoin. Um, it's really unfortunate. It's, um, it's, it's baffling at some level. Uh, but if you happen to live here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, you know, I think we collectively might need to start getting a little bit more vocal about why we, as residents and members of these communities, believe that we should be freed, liberated from this mine waste. The only way to really close, I believe, the chapter of Pennsylvania's history that involves coal mining is to clean up the mess that was left behind. And you know, it's incredible to me, it's utterly incredible to me that there seems to be a disconnect between people who I think their, their heart is in the right place at some level. It's like, you know, with limited information, all I'm being told is that, hey, there's this facility that burns mine waste and something comes up into the air and hey, maybe there's a little bit of pollution in there, right? So we're going to focus on that little bit of pollution and ignore the fact that maybe 30 miles away, we got a fucking underground mine that's been burning seemingly endlessly for decades, displacing entire communities. That's not hyperbole. There are literal towns that have been erased from the map. Everybody's had to just get up and leave because the ground beneath their feet is quite literally on fire. And the toxic fumes and emissions, and to use that scientific term again, a bunch of toxic shit is just kind of spewing endlessly into the environment. Never mind that that's going on, you know, downwind, so to speak, right? Hey, we're, you know, when, when the wind blows from west to east, it's going to kind of come in our direction. Never mind that. We're not going to really try to focus the state on doing a little bit more to help mitigate that. Maybe, right, advocating that the federal government step in. Hey, look, I know that there's a need for a lot of money around the world for this issue, that issue. But hey, maybe there's a little bit of extra money left over to potentially help put out underground mine fires here in Pennsylvania so that we don't just have this completely uncontrolled emittive process that goes on night and day, 24-7, 365 days a year. Hey, let's forget about that. Let's focus instead on a, on a purpose-built mine waste to energy facility that's attempting to do things as appropriately as possible, right? Using the very best technology available to reduce the overwhelming majority of bad things, right, that would otherwise just simply spew into the environment if these mine waste piles or alternatively, right, these underground, uh, you know, mine fires, right, when all that stuff is just burning, there's, there's, no, there's no emissions controls. There, there's none whatsoever. How that is lost on people, right, how that is somehow ignored or forgotten or overlooked is beyond me. Um, but you know what? Hey, it is what it is. I'm deeply disappointed 
that this is the reality we find ourselves in, but I also think it's a teachable opportunity. You know, a number of years ago, when I was very, very ignorant as to nuclear power, and I found myself uh, quite literally in the shadow of uh, a nuclear power plant, my visceral, ignorant, you know, just kind of like uninformed thinking was, wow, nuclear power, all I've ever seen is bad stuff. Uh, Chernobyl, Three Mile Island. Fast forward, right? Hey, now you can think Fukushima, right? You, you think of these handful of instances where things have kind of gone left, so to speak, right? And you just say to yourself, my gosh, we need to just shut this down. This must be very unsafe. And then thankfully, right, I happened to befriend somebody who happened to be, uh, I believe at the time, like interning at this plant. And suddenly I was kind of presented with a completely different picture of what was going on there. Um, more generally, right, regarding like the, the overall safety of nuclear power. And so I saw the transformation within myself from being very ignorant, um, being very, I think, uh, almost outspokenly ignorant about a belief that nuclear power is no good. I don't want to live right next to one of these facilities. They should be shut down, right? I saw the transformation within myself. And so I'm very optimistic and I'm very hopeful that the same transformation that I personally went through, right? From going from somebody who's like deeply afraid and anxious about nuclear power to somebody who's like, wow, this is like phenomenal. Like, we need more nuclear power plants, not less of them. And the great news is the technology has evolved over the years to the point where it's even safer, you know, than it's ever been. And I'm hopeful that individuals who right now have that same visceral, ignorant fear of mine waste to energy facilities who look upon them and say, oh my gosh, these are terrible, they should be shut down immediately. I have hope that they can also undergo a transformation process whereby, hey, they get more uh, information, more balanced information. They see the, the, the bigger picture of what's going on. And through that process, they can come around to realize, yeah, you know what? To properly close the chapter of Pennsylvania's history concerning coal mining, hey, it involves cleaning up the mine waste that still exists here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And these mine waste energy facilities, we need them. We need them to finish the job. You know, for me, this isn't, you know, forget about stronghold digital mining for a moment, all right? This is about ultimately the entire mine waste to energy industry, if you want to call it that, that remains here in the Commonwealth of uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I think of Robindale Energy out west. Uh, I think of the, uh, the Rich family, right, that, that they, uh, I think they manage two facilities uh, not that far from here. Um, of course, I think about Stronghold. I think about Olympus, who uh, still owns a facility not that far from me. And, uh, you know, there are a handful of other facilities here in the state that still attempt to do this work. It's not easy work. But it's mission critical work if we truly want to appropriately close the chapter of Pennsylvania's history that involves coal mining. We need to clean up the mine waste. So if you happen to be somebody who lives here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and you're like, yeah, man, like that kind of makes sense to me. And yeah, hey, I know what you're talking about. Um, maybe just give a thumbs up or some sort of, maybe not a thumbs up, but maybe just comment on, on this uh, uh, broadcast. Um, you know, because I think it's, I, I would like to try to gauge how many of us are actually here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. How many of us have a voice that will carry some modicum of weight amongst our elected representatives, right? Um, you know, hey, it's great that we have a lot of supporters, you know, not just around the United States, but even like around the world. It's kind of amazing. You know, the stronghold digital mining shareholder base is quite diverse, to say the least. But some of the issues that we're confronting uh, right now in terms of these attacks they're very localized, and I think the most appropriate response is going to be a local response, right? And I think we may need to consider having to organize ourselves a little bit better so that we can at least present the other side of the argument. It can't just be, 
some attorneys in a courtroom. This is kind of something that's beyond that, right? Perception, for better or for worse, can become reality. And if there's a perception that the mine waste to energy industry is all about, you know, these terrible people that are really greedy, all they care about is money, they're crypto speculators, you know, and what they're doing is they're burning a bunch of coal and tires just to get that Bitcoin, and they could care less about the environment, all they want is money, right? If that's the perception that we allow to slowly but surely take root, despite how like off base that is on so many levels, right? If that's the perception that takes hold, it is going to have a material impact, not just on Stronghold Digital Mining's future, but from my perspective, on the future of these mine waste mountains that exist here in my home state of Pennsylvania. I'd like to see the chapter, as I've said before, as it relates to coal mining, properly closed by all of this mine waste being cleaned up. If you agree with that, let me know in the comments and let's be open-minded to, you know, being a little bit more vocal about this. And I'll have more to say about this topic in the future, um, but I just wanted to at least address it today. Okay, now listen, if you're somebody who's like, what the F are you talking about, bro? All I give a shit about is the stock price. I see it's like kind of below four bucks. What's going on? This is an important topic too, right? Yeah, the stock price. I get it. I do. But ultimately, the reason why Stronghold Digital Mining does what it does is because it's cleaning up mine waste here in my home state of Pennsylvania. So you'll have to forgive me if I'm not obsessing over the stock price, and I'm instead deeply concerned about this perception that may be taking hold that Stronghold Digital Mining, as well as the entire mine waste energy industry here in the state of Pennsylvania, is about nothing but like crypto mining and crypto speculation. And that, you know, somehow there's no benefit to the community as a result of these facilities, these purpose-built facilities um, existing. Okay, my friend, with all of that said, let's stay positive, let's be great, and we will see each other again tomorrow.